Hello, 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 hello. All right. Let's look at the Bob Raymonds. We got Bob Raymond, age 66. Close to my age. I'm 61, born in 1957, age 66. Bob Raymond's address is 75 Sanborn Road, Green, Maine. Possible relatives include Victoria Ballard, Jill Pichette, and three others. And by the way, stoned but not alone, Lionel also thinks Mel is a man. Sons of bitches. A lot of people lie. Dolly Vision is live. Ah. Uh. Tezo, BH, hi. Well, I was being stalked by Bob Raymond in the last live that it just ended a few minutes ago because I just freaked out because Stone But Not Alone came in here, started harassing me. Um, so Bob Raymond, who goes under Bob R-E-Y-M-O-N-D. Well, nice to see you, hon. So I just thought I'd look these up because I just, and I thought I'd, I'd also make a police report um, this guy's 48, Bob P. Raymond, and he lives on 200 North River Road in Auburn, Maine, so that's about an hour from here. Then there's this one, Clareton, Pennsylvania, Salem, Mass., age 77, hmm, he could drive up here easily. Then there's Bob Harold Raymond, age 66. He lives in Florida. He's 66. So at least Bob Raymond's, gosh. Um, here's one who's 80. Diego, California. Here's one who's 64. He lives in Holyoke, Mass. That's another. That's not that far. He's close in age to me. Hitchcock Street, 95 Hitchcock Street. Huh. Bob Raymond. Here's one in um, Idaho. Here's one from Washington. Dover, Mass. That's another one not so far away. How old is this guy? Doesn't say. Bob Raymond, age 80, age 80. Seems like he'd be too old to harass me. Montana, North Carolina. Boy, there's one per state. Oregon, Portland, Oregon, 58, age 58. Springville, California, age 75. McAllen, Texas, age 72, age 80. Tacoma, Washington, Newport, New Hampshire. Bob Raymond. That's close. Hmm. 5488. Summer Street, 169 Summer Street. How you doing, BH? I got to give you a, let me give you a wrench, hon. I'm going to give you a wrench. Uh, hold on one second here. Let me give you a wrench. Bob, let's see. Who the fuck is Bob Raymond? Yeah, who the hell is Bob Raymond, guys? I swear to God. Let me give you a wrench, honey pie. So I was going to call the cops and let them know this guy was stalking me. You think I should? I think I should. This guy's from New York. Doesn't say his name, his age. Illinois, New York, Arizona. 
New England, N-E. What? Lincoln, N-E. What's N-E? Ohio, Oregon, California. See, th these are the ones in Maine. So this guy's 66. Oh, that's nice, Taser. Good to see you, hon. Thank you. Oh, it was good to see you, Pat. Well, suddenly I thought, you know what? I'm going to call. Yeah, who is Bob? Yay. Good to see you, B.A. How's it going, hon? We have checked a bullshit. Hell yeah. Bob, so B.H. and uh, Tazo, do you like the painting I did earlier? We're doing the Team Rose Painting Club. And I just did an abstract. Which Bob criticized. Now, this guy Bob's a real asshole. So he said he was following me around today in a black Toyota truck. Which is probably a bunch of lies. Probably got a red, you know sob or something um this guy's in auburn he's only 48 i don't know nebraska is it thank you hon thank you so this guy was stalking me and he was all over my last live i'm just gonna let's make a phone call I don't know. I need to send an email report. Should I call Bob? Should I call? Or should I just send an email? What should I do? Um Um Mhm. Mm Oh, don't worry. I'm not into mission anymore, sweetheart. After the way he's treated me, I mean, I, I literally am like, you got to be fucking. Yeah, he, he calls me every a horrible word. But Lionel's off. Yeah, he calls me a cunt, a muck hole. Yeah, he's awful. He's horrible to me. Oh, yeah, I would never date him. Don't worry. I know I would be a battered woman. I know. That's what Lika said, too. I know. Oh, I know. She would. I agree with you. Yeah, well, I don't have too many people in mind. Uh, I know. I know. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Thank you, hon. Thank you, hon. I think it looks like roses. <laughs> Side note, Miss Rose to Tammy Lou. I listened to Bigfoot Encounter Experience. Just heard a whole show on the state of Maine. Really? We have quite a few out here. Wow. Really interesting. I'm going to call the cops. Let's see. Uh, let's see. I hate, I feel weird calling them, but um, I also feel like I should. I don't know. Oops. One second. I mean, that's not his real name, you know. I'm going to call. If this is an emergency, please dial 9 to be directed to 911. Please select from the following options. To dial ball extension, please press pound followed by the four digit extension. What? For administrative assistance, press 1. For Sergeant James Moore, press 2. For Officer Travis Ford, press 3. For Officer Antonio Silvacchio, press 4. For Officer Jacob Powers, press 5. For Officer Chilietta Bajaku, press 6. For Chief Dadney, press 7. To repeat these options. I don't know who, I don't, I don't know. Who am I supposed to call? The fuck? 
Uh, I don't know who to call. I wanted to call and let them know that on my live, I'm being, I don't know who to call. Um, I don't know what to do, guys. Should I do another painting? You want me to do another painting? I don't know what to do, guys. I don't, I don't like being terrorized. I don't like being stalked. I, I will, I will call, I will call the cops. I just feel, I'm just going to do it again. I don't know. I don't know who to call. I don't know who to talk to. I just feel nervous now. I don't know what to do, guys. Should I do another painting while I wait and think about how I'm going to uh, report these fucking assholes. You know, this guy, Bob Ramis, probably Nicolina. Um, let's put on some classical music. My numbers are down too. I mean, without the drama. Um, that is a pretty painting. I do like it. Looks like some of the stuff I used to do back in the day. Thanks for the likes, guys. Oh, this... Oh, this was the one that's over now. Well, where's my new one? Um, Bob Raymond. Oh, this was the one that's over. Hit now. the like, guys. Uh, and sub me up too. Bob Raymond. Bob Raymond. Uh, Andrew, have you sub me up? Is that rapper? Have you sub me up, rapper? Rapper. Um, you want to come up on panel? Okay. Should I do another painting? I want to, I want to listen to some, um, I want to listen to some classical music. Tying up loose ends. Uh, I love her, my sweetheart, my son, my man. Cherish, wow. Wow. Thank you. Roses and lilacs. That's nice. I'll call it roses and lilacs. Uh, well, how, so what are they going to do? I mean, they can drive by my house. I can have them drive by my house and look for that truck. The black Toyota truck, which is probably not... Yes, painting is good for stress relief. I was listening to music when painting. Do you paint, Pat? You want to be in the Team Rose Painting Club? Or do you, are you talking about painting like the house? Ask for a detective. We don't have detectives here in Maine. You're going to start painting at 52. I'll definitely watching you paint. That's cool. Should I do another painting? I could do another one. Should I? Um... You want me to do another painting, you guys? I could use this as the uh, thing to make... Oops, oops. Just ruined it. There, I can sell this. Somebody can buy it. Uh, we'll frame it, and it'll become an art Team Rose art collector's item. By Team Rose. All right, I'm gonna let this dry. Let me do. I'll do another one. Uh. Can I do another one. You should. You guys should see the other paint set that I got. That's at the other house. I paint on canvas with oils. Oh, really, Pat? That's so cool. I didn't know that. I haven't a creative bone in my body, says Tammy. <laughs> I try to be creative, but drug and blink blank when I try to paint or draw. I, I just horse around. These beautiful paintings in your house. Thank you, hon. Call the police and ask for a detective. Yes, please paint. I'm excited to start, but I'm not an artist and, and can draw sticky pulses. I'm just going to do... Um, I color the audit coloring books. Yeah, with Marcus, you know, yeah, I, I, that sounds fun. 
How come you never love me, Andrew? Why are you always loving everybody else? Oh, I'm going to call the police. Too. I feel like I have to. This guy's been harassed. Because then I, you know what I should do is call tonight. Should I ask for the chief? Who should I ask for, guys? Hi, Chili Chick. Good to see you, hon. Emergency, please dial nine. Be directed to nine one one. Please select from the following options. The dial bar extension. Please press pound followed by the four-digit extension. For administrative assistant, press 1. For Sergeant James Moore, press 2. What do I do? For Officer Travis Ford. I guess I'm just going to go with James Moore. Katie. Magical boobs. <laughs> I'm just trying this guy. Bob. <laughs> Can we do a landscape? You reach the desk of Sergeant James Moore of the Rockmore Police Department. I'm away from my desk right now. Please leave a message including your name and number, and I will call you back as soon as I can. Thank you. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, simply hang up or press pound for further options. And I'm calling because there's this guy who's been harassing me on uh, my social media. He's got a picture of the house across the street as his profile picture. And he's alluding to the fact that he's stalking me and that he's following me around. And that he has a black Toyota truck. And he's just um, trying to scare me. And so I just thought I'd report it. It's uh, April 17th, 2024. And I just wanted to leave... A message for somebody so that I did record it and I might be calling you guys back as well. But please give me a call. Thanks so much. Bye bye. Well, I left it. Oh, there's Bob. So, Bob, we got all these Raymonds. Let's see. We got all these Bob Raymonds. Look, Bob, are you the one that's 48 from Auburn, Maine? Or are you the one that's 80 from Georgetown, Maine? Just about an hour from me. So is Auburn, different direction. What about this? Age 66 from Green, Maine, Bob. You love painting? You've been drawing on cardboard lately? That's cool. You want me to draw a painting of spring in my state? Do one of your spiritual minds paintings. <laughs> Will you call my Aunt Beverly? She's a big fan of yours. Sure. Don't worry about Bob. Bob is a blob. <laughs> yeah, he is a blob. All right, I need to listen to some um, Vivaldi. Um, try to get my creative juices going. Huh? Winter, summer, spring. Let's listen to spring. He's my miracle child. So how does your miracle child get? I feel like eating. Like, I don't know. I don't want to listen. To I want us to. That's spring. The way you reverse this tower will upset somebody. Billy Carson's live. Huh. Billy Carson. I mean, who doesn't want to watch Billy Carson? Where's Billy Carson? Hold on. Billy. 
There, Billy Carson. Maybe I should listen to Billy. Well, we find extensive geologic evidence that there was a massive event during 11,600 years ago, exactly when Plato said I know. was destroyed. And Solar I know the last name's different, in but... In that area where we find evidence of tectonic plates that dove under the others and literally subducted... You want to call the police later? Area. Yeah, I do. And we see the descriptions today of Atlantis. It seems to match very, very well with that. Yeah, it matches perfectly. <sighs> If you look at I'm kind of tired. Like, for example, I get California, to, I get, you know, well, what should I do? Small. Should I make another painting? All right, I'm going to make another painting. So I remember when I was younger, they were talking that they, when that plate shifts, that, that area of I'm just going to do something abstract small, again. It's, it's, what I feel like. plate, it's going to drop down and under. So these things are active geological things that have actually happened today. It's just that. We're talking about something that happened in the ancient past. Yeah, and I think the other thing, so that it's, so there aren't people that are fearful right now necessarily, is to point out that when we see these small movements of plates right now, it's not at all reflective or even related to what they experienced. Yeah. We're not talking about small movements. What what we're talking about is we have to break free of what's known as gradualism. Right. Gradualism is gradualism. A, this concept that we've been taught in school and it's been. Very, very hammered in the science right, community. No, it's crazy. Is this idea that anything that happens on Fuck. Earth happens in a very I keep dropping way. these damn. Uh -huh. Give you an now, I was it's just fucking there. annoying. Oh my god, I can't stand this. Oh my god. Are massive, massive layers of sandstone. Yes. Specifically sandstone because it's easily eroded by water. Mm. Easily eroded. Oh my god, you've no, got to be kidding me. I don't think I can stand doing this, guys. These paints are the worst. They're literal fucking torture. Oh my god. I mean, a tremendous. So what we're looking at doesn't matter if it's a Grand Canyon or we're looking at uh, a lot of these geologic formations in like the Scablands of Washington, yeah. like like Randall Carlson and Grant Hancock talk about, yeah. or a lot of these other uh, other areas of Earth, like even the Rift Valley of Africa. Right. What we have to realize is that <sighs> these plate movements and these earthquakes that we see that are devastated, mm -hmm. those are just like little tiny micro movements of the Earth right now. Yeah. They're just little tiny yeah. movements. Yeah. That's not what happened in the ancient past, though. No, right? it's like little, a little clearing of the throat. <clears> throat> exactly, That's all that right? Is. <laughs> well, what we're talking about in the ancient past is a conjunction of many, many different events. Yeah. You know, what exactly caused the Younger Dryas catastrophes of 12,000 years ago is up for debate. It, was it in cosmic impacts? Was it coronal mass ejection? Was it a combination of planetary alignments with outer planetary things? Right. Maybe it was a combination of a lot of, a lot of those. But one thing's for sure is that it was like the end of the world. Yeah. Now, everywhere in the planet didn't necessarily have those, we can call them almost insane effects, yeah. but some places did. Mm -hmm. Now, what we find in certain locations, uh, a great example is at the south end of Lake Timikaka. Yeah. There's an incredible serpent statue there uh, right north of Kiwanaku mm -hmm. that has this giant black mark strewn across part of it. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's in a solid black mark that's yeah. not on either end. Right. And you see that in other places. I see that in Turkey I'm studying. You see that in Egypt with the glossy right. of men, men yeah. on, and many, many other places. And what you see is that there's this burn mark. Mm -hmm. The burn mark is only about a foot or two wide. Yeah. I took a picture of it on the Colossi of Memnon in, in Egypt. Those are statues that existed before these events. Yes. And what you find is that when, when talking to people like Brian Forster, mm -hmm. is that something came from the Northeast. Mm -hmm. We know that because those markings, those yeah. burns, what you call vitrification, mm -hmm. are specifically on like a north a northeast trajectory, right. which lends itself to the fact that it was either a cosmic impact from the Northwest or the Northeast, or it was a coronal mass ejection from the Northeast. Now, coronal mass ejections are not quite what people think. It doesn't just blast the whole planet and crisp it into nothing. Right. You'd be gone. I know. What happens is when you get this, you get a weakening of the magnetosphere, the poles first, and the ozone starts to have holes open up. Right. And when those holes open up, they can target specific spots on the planet. Right. Uh, a movie, an uh, incredible, not a, well, I shouldn't say an incredible movie, a decent movie that has a lot of Hollywood, but a lot of truth woven is called The Core. Yeah. It's actually, uh, I just watched that the other day. It's, it has a lot of truth woven into the documentary. And if you in that movie, a hole opens up. It's depressing. The bridge between San Francisco, right? Correct. 
and the bridge will start to melt. You can see the actual solar wind yeah. come right in through the Earth's uh, magnetosphere because it's an opening yeah. there and sear everything. Literally, it starts to melt the bridge. Yes. Now, imagine if you had these ancient civilizations that were building in these high elevation nodal points that were energetically active. Yeah. Uh, My question and curiosity here is whether or not those areas were susceptible to being damaged just because of the energy they were opening and whether or not they were balancing that energy of the planet. And the evidence of that building, talking to a lot of other people around around the world, like Ben my train of dice, is that you see these, these giant stone granite boxes like the Sarah. I'm hungry. Right? Who wants a that pizza? That have no Who wants a pizza? I commented her number on one of them. Some of them were severely damaged. What? From some kind of Who wants a pizza? I'm hungry. Pizza. I need a it makes me really wonder. Let's make a pizza. Great and a lot of these other structures were actually trying to balance the energy of the earth. And that it was almost like a grid overload. Which is why maybe those areas. Let's make a pizza. I commented her number on one of your posts. Right. Try calling her while live. And be, what? What do you mean? Diorite. I mean, they're like so high on the hardness scale in order to warp them without cracking them. Heat, right? Yes, exactly. Mind boggling. So it does seem like an overload to me. Now, what kind of heat are we talking about? We're talking about temperatures that would have had to exceed, in some cases, I creeped out by Salvador Dali. Facts. You've never painted? I think Salvador Dali's creepy as fuck. Creepy as hell. I do, darling. I do. I'm sorry, but I do. Where you know you go and it's like all the power is there. They go and they check on it. That's where it would overload. Exactly. And that's uh, how I view these ancient these ancient sites is that they almost overloaded and exploded. Right. And whoever was there was like vaporized. Yeah. That's how extreme these events were, and that's why so little is left behind from that because the only ones that were able to survive are the ones that saw these events ahead of time. Like, oh, talking yeah. about leaving Atlantis to create Kemet. Exactly. Is this idea of, well, they actually knew these were coming. Mm -hmm. They could tell, they could map out the ages, these different events, with the Kali Yuga cycle and the Mayan calendar. Right. They understood that these were going to happen. And they would send out their greatest sages to protect and create libraries, knowing that they would all die. To save the knowledge. So that in the future, long in the future, yeah. we could look back. I always think ahead, too. Breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs to a yeah. greater story and a greater understanding. Facts. And you know, I took a Geiger counter down into the Serapium, and those stone boxes are still highly radioactive. Mm, which, how would you get that other than extreme solar or some kind of event, right? Exactly. And uh, there's one room that we got to go in in one of our private visits that has a box that's 1,000 tons. Wow. And on it little tiny radioactive symbol that they a sticker that they put on it to let us know it was radioactive you guys different. you don't have to have a plan or even be good at painting you can just you just do it you just make up shit it's mind-blowing to think about it. even like you know boxes just to bring it back for another i just need to be creative we see those in abydos we see the serapium um, they just found a new one just the other day like a, like a month ago yes that's that's a brain of box that yeah. so if anyone have followed that outside of was that outside of cairo they just found yeah, a massive, massive and by the way uh, you want to give me crap about calling mel a man talk to stiggy and talk to lionel but lionel's allowed to isn't he because he's gay and he's a satanist so he's allowed in the club but old team rose isn't allowed in the club She's not a Satanist. You walk down this set of stairs that go down into the earth to get down there. The problem is, it's not wide enough to bring one of those granite boxes down there. You can't bring it down there. You so can't maneuver them. So in how there. do they get there? They had to be manifested there either by teleportation oh, wow. or manifestation. You can't even bring the stone to create the box down there because the stone needs to be two-thirds of the size of the box, bigger than the box, to, to hone it down to the I have to go over to those channels and... Bother those Which people. They were teleported in there, or whatever technique they use, we don't know. I'm just hypothesizing, but they sure didn't lift them up and hoist them down there. No, they, they either built them down there or some other means, right? Like you were saying, like we we still have to get into this concept of how is the Great Pyramid even built? Right. We know we know for a fact that it was not slaves and pulley systems no. and such. And even in, even when they take those extreme examples of saying that. Even the labor force required would have been impossible, impossible. Two and a half million stone blocks. 
an average of five to ten tons each. Now, how could they have done that, Billy? Let's let's get into this for a minute because if we look at you know physics, we get into the physics of them. We learn about things like levitation, yeah. harmonics. Yeah. First of all, let's put that aside for a second. Like it's like the famous Sherlock Holmes quote. You right. know, when you're trying to figure something out, you know, whatever remains, no matter how improbable, must be the truth. Exactly. So let's put that levitation aspect aside for a minute mm-hmm. and the, the potential of the human mind and yeah. our voice, right? Yeah. How else could they have done it? How did they hoist? First of all, a lot of people don't know, but the outer casing stones are are actually quite small compared to the inner stones. Yes. Above the king's chamber, you have granite blocks in there that are sealing the the king's chamber that are over 50 to 100 tons. Now imagine for a minute putting one of those in place 20 feet or more above you. Right. How did they do that? Did they build the pyramids around it? Right. We don't even painting know. number two. How do they align star constellations perfectly to it? And the then shafts cutting through a solid stone all the way to the base and beyond beyond the base. The we, subterranean shaft. We know that there are aqua, 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 aquifer systems underneath it, so something yeah. energetic is going on there. Exactly. Something energetic, but if we take out levitation aspects mm-hmm. and the power of the mind. How could they have done it? It wasn't mud ramps because you would need more mass in mud than the pyramid itself. <laughs> it's laughable. So, really, what it leaves, remember that that quote we just said, yeah. whatever remains, what remains? Levitation, anti gravity, um, cymatic frequencies. You know, oh, fuck. That's the only thing you can do. That's the, only thing. That's the only logical option, you know. Two million blocks of stone plus all the granite. Here it is. And to put it together in a period of time, they're trying to say, you know, twenty years. I think it was done a lot faster than that. Oh, of course. Yeah. It's th- this is how you know. Take all of the greatest wonders around the world mm-hmm. and then ask the ancient indigenous who built them and how long it took. Mm-hmm. I like, don't know. We'll see. Yo, that story you guys have been told, yeah. that's not anyway. Exactly. So let's take an example of Alora Caves. If anyone doesn't know Alora Caves, it's the finest cave temple, single mountain uh, excavation in the world. There's oh, nothing like that. Temple from a mountain. Single mountain of this volcanic basalt. Right. One of the hardest stones Hard. in the world. Six and a half on the most hardest scale. Now, not only did they carve out a mountain, but the entire thing has been. Why is Bob body shaming me? We need to breathe. No, Why is Bob Reynolds body shaming me? It's just not the thing. It's not Rose Gold Ramble. They say it was built in like a week. Mm-hmm. That's always the same story. By Vishnu. Yeah. They say Vishnu built it and created it. And you're like, well, wait a minute. I thought that was like, that wasn't real. Right. And then you're getting into it. And you're starting, then now start looking at the great parents of Giza mm-hmm. and the connections we have with these pre dynastic, mysterious Yeah, really creepy. Tibby yep. Fox, that good to no see you, hon. Other than things like the Temple of Edfu with Zeptali. Thank you, hon. Wow, is it, is it, could it actually be? Derek Dolce, Dolce. Yeah. Based on alignments of Leo and all these different concepts. But all around the world, we see the same thing. That the greatest structures ever built were not built by the indigenous. No. Thank you, all. hon. And the indigenous people are saying, well, the gods built that. Right. I like, just took a big tour to camp. <sighs> I took 20 people out there. Fuck, Bob. And Jesus. The, uh, you asked the indigenous priests of the Angkor Wat temple who built this uh, Angkor Wat, the largest temple complex in the world, by the way. And they say it was. Hey, Miss Rose, did you know I've been watching place. your dance with like, you guys? Like, like, what do you small, mean? Just like a. Cast uh, yeah, like a laser cast that was just filled with molten stone and sitting in it and it cured. Yeah, it's remarkable, and the more we look at Wait. it, the more we see that Thanks, huh? these structures were Thank you. Not really Thanks, created Pat. by man, like we think. They were created. I should make a series of these and then put them on the like wall. Uh-huh. We can look back no. and finally see the engineering honey. behind them and be like, "Wait a minute, this is a uh, sense. Yeah, right. I, I will call again. Thank you. Oh, no. That's nice. <laughs> right, so we will buy in the future. Hi, hey, say almost fire. Good to see you, honey. You got home after two weeks. Wow, that's exciting. Glad you're home, honey. And we're doing paint. We're doing um, we're doing the team rose um, 
Painting club. These are my paintings. It's the first one I did tonight. Oh, here's my second one. The Team Rose, the Team Rose Painting Club. Nine one one operator, how you doing, hon? Good to see you. Apologize. I'll never do that. We would have very little left in our civilization today. And so we need to revere the ancients. Oh my God. Who would say that? Far longer than we could ever imagine. Oh my God. You are really bad, Bob. Really, really, really bad. Thank you, St. Elmo's Fire. Thank you, honey. Exactly what I've been telling the people. Okay. Bob is really a sick man. So there's painting number two. Painting number one. My my home's become an art room. Should I try to do a landscape now? Thank you, Debbie. The Great Sphinx, which used to be a lion that faces Leo. Okay, thanks, hon. The problem here is that. We yeah, bad Bob. Bob sucks. Let's just everybody write Bob sucks. Okay, everybody write Bob sucks. You're bad, Bob, and you suck. I could just make more paintings. I don't know, guys. Bob sucks. We know that it's far older than that. Double the age. So I don't know what to do. I have company, so. I could go, I could, Bob does suck. Thank you, Bob sucks. Bob sucks. Let's all say it together. Bob sucks. There we go. Bob sucks. Bob sucks. Good job. Bob sucks. Deluge. Bob sucks. Bob sucks dick. Bob, you suck dick. And so does Nicolina. Oh. Oh. Oh, they they did. They did. They wouldn't let me post it. Bob sucks. But Bob sucks. How about that? Yeah, whoever you are, just know that you suck. Yeah, Bob sucks. No, who else thinks so? What do you mean, simp? Bob, you're a rotten piece of shit. You're overweight and you're bald and you have hairs growing out of your nose and you're insecure and that's why you shit on me. Anyway, all right, guys. I'm going to go because Bob's here and Bob makes me feel like shit. And I don't like Bob. I can wait for 40 minutes, but I don't know what to do. You know, I could do more painting. I don't know what to do. I have to write in my book. I need to write in my book. Maybe I'll write. I need to write to somebody. I don't know what to do, guys. Bob, I was going to write and do a live writing. Um, I was going to write my book live. That's when all those other civilizations. You know, I was going to do that. It means that that original period of these lost civilizations, the emergence of the golden age, was nearly forty. Or we can go in here and chat with Billy Carson. About that, it means that their golden age lasted more than twenty thousand years. How long? Oh, I can't even chat. Like three, four hundred years. Damn. See if I can get it going. Getting paint on everything. Oh, I'm gonna take a nap. Oh, God, I'm tired. Is a reflection of your energy button. In a golden age, for in twenty thousand years, with extended lifespans, by the way. Of course. I'm gonna go watch Dolly Vision. 60, 70, 80 years old. Wasn't happening. No, we. From if you want to look at everything. You want me to call you? Serious? Who's giving the? Who is that? How about Dolly? Let's go see what's going on. He's live. There he is. So, um, anyway, open phone lines. Okay. What did you think about her theory of just saying like, "Go ahead, leave," and then he left, and then what? Um, I mean, it, it's, it, it's possible. I mean, it's possible the boy could have ran away. It's possible that he has a friend we don't know about. This is that he Sebastian case. I mean, Terrible. Still a lot of, you know, I don't think that. I'm just saying the options. You know, there are options. Yeah. So, on the hotline, this is PJ. Oh, hi, PJ. It's Joanne from New York. How are you? Oh, good. How are you? Good, honey. Yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, it's a, to 
think it's either two things. Them not saying anything, the proud foot, to anybody, is a sign of guilt, or they know where he is. Yeah. It's one of the two. So, I don't know, you know, like, they had no security cameras in the house. But this is EJ, just as Jay in a while. Yeah, and they have security cameras on their house now. Cheesy Mary. Oh, so tired, guys. Let's all go to sleep. Oh my, what'd she say? Oh my God, Rose, I've never said that in my life. I don't think I can. <laughs> oh, Pat, you're funny as hell. <laughs> oh, you're a funny one, Pat. You're in the Djibouti Horn of Africa country. 4.08 a.m. Oh, wow. Here in Djibouti Horn of Africa. 4.08, huh? Wow. Yeah, I heard that. My mom put me through serious etiquette class. I had to learn to walk with a butt. Oh, my goodness, Pat. Really? That's interesting. I'd love to talk more about that. Sticky Allison. What is wrong with you? Bob, you're, like, lower than low. Bob is just a negative. I should, I should, I should block him. Oh, look, there's people saying hi to me. Hey, Steffi. Hey, Kathy. Oh. It's time to videomize your life. Steffi. Stream movies and shows. Uh, Kathy. Fiber internet. Tony Baloney. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Anyways. Happened, had, you know, you know, the very beginning of the story, and then they get to a part where uh cp stops her and he's like i want to make this very clear like he always does because uh he just seems like such a chauvinistic anyway oh, God. he goes really? into the whole phone call they had together he says that it started exactly at 9 38 or something like that and then he's like oh all God, right guys i love yes I'm going to get going. Big kiss, guys. I will be back with more art and whatever we're going to do tomorrow. It's going to be fun. Love you. Love you guys. I know.